You're listening to Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hayner. Hey guys, it's Charge Hayner at Zoom the TBT, and we are completing our Columbus Regional Pod preview. And Charge, we are going to the upper right, the 611 314 pod. What do you see here? I see once again, this is our fourth uh, pod in Columbus tonight. We've uh, completed three, and this is the fourth one. And, and the theme in Columbus just continues uh, with just an incredibly strong, talented uh, regional. So Blue Collar U, the guys from Buffalo, are uh, going to come out gritty and uh, be a solid team. Team zip them up, new team. Deeply talented Ohio uh, first year team had some great success this year. We're building off of that with their fan base should be a fun team to watch. And then of course the nerd team. So uh, one of the new teams and uh, has been fun uh, watching their social media. And uh, these aren't just a bunch of smart guys. Once we dig into their roster, you're going to be pretty impressed with uh, how good the nerd team is and maybe see an upset in round one. We'll see. Quite possible. Our guest tonight too. We have, the head coach and GM of the Nerd Team, Matt Goldsmith, and the GM of Ohio, 1804, Kenny Brown. Gentlemen, what is going on? How you doing? Thanks for having us. Yeah, what's up, fellas? Excited to be here. Yeah, very excited. And uh, Matt is an alumni of our uh, bubble uh, speed dating, which is one of the teams that got in. and actually got in pretty clean, which we're not surprised by. It's a fairly safe team. Yeah, so I, I think I called that. I said it was not even a question of these guys. <laughs> Both of them, Ohio and actually, speaking of which, uh, on that particular show, there was no doubt in my mind both these teams would be. He, he was he was so he confident was about it, up. he didn't show up for that taping. That's I know I didn't. It's like third team bubble show, not a chance. I'm not even showing. You're you're exactly <laughs> right about that. So, so let's get into this matchup, Charge, and I'm going to make you start with blue collar because you're from Western New York. So talk a little bit about Buffalo. I know, I know. Uh, yeah, no blue collar. You is going to be a solid team. Obviously, the narrative. Uh, a lot of these guys coming back. Team that uh, uh, took down Eric. Arizona. So that's what, um, you know, blue collar use banking on this year that they still have that kind of same mojo, the same energy, the same cohesion uh, to knock off, uh, you know, a, a top seed in the NCAA tournament and obviously looking to get by nerd team in round one. But, you know, some of the, uh, you know, kind of familiar faces are back with Massenburg and Perkins and it's going to be a really solid team. Um, you know, uh, a six seed, uh, you know, I, I think is fair based on how deep this is. Uh, but, uh, you know, once again, this is going to be kind of an unproven team, uh, you know, not a whole lot of these guys have played in the TBT before and looking at my stats, zero of them have played in the TBT before. Uh, so uh, this is going to be a team that they're going to have to figure it out on the fly. And, but um, obviously high level basketball speaks, they'll come together. I'm sure they're training camping in Buffalo somewhere uh, loading up on anchor bar wings. And, uh, you know, hopefully they'll eat a few too many before they face you at the nerd team. Uh, if I hey, charge, where'd you go to school? I forgot. What college did you go to? I went to SUNY Fredonia. So yeah, that's you're talking right, about those SUNY right. schools. So that's D3. Right. So Mike, we're 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 pulling for D3 too. Uh Painter and I are both D3 fans, both uh, starting out at uh, D3 schools. I wasn't smart enough to go to any grad schools like Hainer, but uh you that's know, what I was Fredonia. getting to. I'm I'm a I am a Warshu alum for undergrad, which means I went to a nerd school, which is the nerd team is very kind of my heart, actually. We're the division three version of the nerd team. So look at this roster. First of all, this is a good way to get gold, uh, Matt Goldsmith in here. So you've actually got a fairly credible roster. A lot of guys who are playing like in Israel. It's a pretty high level leagues. So yeah. as a first time team, how are you able to assemble a team that got a fairly respectable 11 seed as a first year team? Yeah, no. Uh, again, thanks for having us on here. We're excited to kind of tell our story. Um, you know, for us, myself and uh, my partner in crime here, uh, Aaron Toomey, who played at Amherst College, was a two time Division three player of the year. I had a great career and, and is now as a great coach. Uh, you know, we at Amherst and in the academic D3 world, we work a lot of, with a lot of these coaches in the Ivy League and, and uh, know a lot of these players because, um, you know, the academic recruiting is a small world. So we kind of know everybody inside of it. So uh, we, we really just tried to connect to the, to the um, network we had in the Ivy League, in the Patriot League, you know, a little bit of the Division Three world, and uh, and then reach out to guys and kind of just pick their brains. Hey, if you if you could put together an Ivy League roster over the last 10, 15 years, what are, who who are some of the names you guys would would pick? You know, and we started there, and we we basically just put together a big Excel spreadsheet and kind of, of course, um, 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. We got, a, we got a spreadsheet going. Got me one of those. Really, really diving into the nerd thing early. That was that got. Is that a pocket <laughs> protector? I see. <laughs> so we, yeah, we went Google spreadsheet, uh, and we we kind of ranked all our guys and got them in order, and then started reaching out. So we went through their coaches. We went through Instagram. We had relationships with some of them already. And then really it was a matter of once we got our first couple guys, it kind of started a snowball effect and it was rolling from there. So, you know, Brandon Sherrod from Yale was early on, you know, we had a good relationship. Both Aaron and I have worked at camp for years and know a lot of their former players. And then once we got two of our former guys, John DeBar Lameo, who has a lot of street cred out there in the um, international world. And then Willie Workman, um, you know, the big one I think for us was when we got Kyle Casey to agree to play with us. Um, mm -hmm. Once we got him, it gave us a ton of uh, credibility to other guys in the Ivy League. And he ended up connecting us with a lot of the, the, the guys who ended up filling out the end of our roster. But, you know, honestly, it was it was a lot of uh, research and then Instagram DMs. I, I keep saying the DM is the new email. That's how we get in touch with these guys. And uh, we're working from there. So it came together slow. Uh, and then it sped up real quick in the last few months here. And I think, you know, we're pretty proud of the roster we put together. There's a lot of really, really good experience at, in high level leagues. Um, and again, I think probably our best asset is our experience. So we're excited for the challenge. You know, Blue Collar U is a great team, but uh, yeah. I think we're up for it. So I'm thinking, I think this roster needs one more player. It's a great roster. It's one more player. And I did notice that Harvard alum, Jeremy Lynn's currently not doing anything. Yeah. Have you reached out? So uh, you'll be happy to know we have reached out. We actually spoke to Jeremy um, through a couple buddies. So a former teammate of mine went to high school with Jeremy. They played on the same high school team and Kyle still has his number. So we got to him a couple different ways. Essentially, he told us that uh, he makes a lot of money uh, going over to eight. <laughs> And uh, playing for a tournament where he might not make any money wasn't exactly in his cards for this summer. Um, we do have a, a couple players. Um, you know, we're trying to play the long game here and not really announce uh, our last guy uh, until closer to uh, game day. Gamesmanship. Uh, so gamesmanship, yeah. So we do have some additions coming down the pipe, uh, but we're going to kind of keep those secrets. Sneaky Ooh. bastards. Sneaky bastards. <laughs> know, just put it out That's there. why you never trust people in glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. All Kenny right. <laughs> yeah. Kenny, Kenny had to take his glasses off. Uh, so he, he comes across as trustworthy on this uh, podcast. But, yeah, I'm equally excited about uh, the nerd team as well. I mean, uh, uh, you mentioned some of the, the stars on there. And I'm still not going to be able to pronounce D. Bartolomeo correctly. But I'll uh, – I heard you say it, and I'm going to give it a try uh, Go for it. But Amir Bell, Kyle Casey, I'm just going to call him JD to, to keep it simple. Uh, yeah. You know, really good core there. Some great depth as well and experience overseas. So we'll see how that goes. And then the other matchup, though, we're going to bring in Kenny Brown, uh, the GM for Ohio University. We won't have any debates over the today. We'll just stick with Ohio University and not get into what, well, I mean, uh, stop stop. What is that crap? Because that's one of the most annoying things from an outside <laughs> fan base. Like I, I live in New York and I'm from Tennessee, so I'm nowhere near Ohio. The Ohio State University is the douchebag thing to say. I've never <laughs> liked it. I don't where does that come from? Uh, I thought we weren't gonna get into it, but uh, I'm gonna have to agree with you here. Growing up in Columbus, um, I never really understood the whole thing and you know, that's why we kind of just mockingly threw it on the Ohio University and, um, you know, obviously the, their rivalry with Michigan, we just say Ohio now. And um, yeah, it's, it's a whole thing that could be a whole <laughs> hour worth of time. <laughs> Uh, excellent. But yeah, I mean, this is speaking of excellent, going to be an amazing three versus 14 matchup. And uh, th this is a matchup I was calling from day one. Um, obviously, Ohio uh, first year TBT team. So got some, uh, you know, teeth to cut there and uh, uh, zip them up. Uh, you know, has a, a star studded roster, but I thought this would be a great matchup having a nice uh, Ohio uh, game in the first round. And so um, when you saw your matchup against uh, zip them up, what was your first thoughts, Kenny? Yeah, well, Charge, you really uh, wish that into existence. So I saw the first bracketology and I was like, oh, that wouldn't be great. And then the second <laughs> round, I was like, well, at least we're in. So uh, the third <laughs> time I saw it, I was, I, I kind of expected it. So um, 
mentally, I was ready to go for it. Um, wouldn't be ideal, uh, our first choice, but you know, we're here, we're happy to be in, and we're going to play the game with everything we got. So it's interesting too, because Ohio has a history of getting in and causing some some heartbreak in the tournament. It's a low seed. 2021 just recently winning a game, 2012, which from the beloved MAC conference is always hard to get a win out of the MAC. So getting two is pretty interesting. So it's definitely a good thing. So do you have any players on this team from that 2012 team? We do, yeah. So um, Stevie was an integral integral part. Um, Stevie Taylor um, was a captain on that team. Nick Kellogg, the son of uh, Clark Kellogg, uh, famously said that his favorite moment in the NCAA tournament was calling a game where his son uh, advanced the Sweet 16 on another channel. Um, and the last one there is um, Randy Keeley was on that team as well. So um, guys that have won before and um, – yeah, hopefully can it can pull it together again. Yeah, and so fortunately for Mr. Preston, unfortunately for you guys, you probably won't have any late roster announcements of a big nature. I read today he's staying in the uh, NBA draft, so that that's fantastic for Ohio. Really a special year for you guys. So um, mm -hmm. obviously, I'm sure you put some feelers out there before you knew what the his. Can't they figure now. out the insurance thing? Can't they figure out a way to get these guys insured if they're going to go pro anyway? There has to be some way to like thank them against uh I, I guess i'm saying something kenny's already thought of obviously but <laughs> that's exactly right i i need to like work with an insurance agent here and get that uh, streamlined real quick but um yeah it's good for him for sure it definitely their run um there in the mac championship and in the ncaa tournament it uh really brought this to light it was something i was considering and then all of a sudden you know, over a weekend in March and, and next weekend after the Virginia win, I was like, I got to strike now. I have to do this right now while the iron's hot. So um, him and Jason, everything he's done for the university definitely led to this uh, coming to fruition. Yeah. And what's your connection with uh, Ohio University? So obviously you've, you've got a lot of contacts. Ohio University uh, alumni team came together nicely, got some top players. So how did you get involved? So obviously you mentioned uh, with the success you needed to have a team this year. So how were you involved uh, as an alumni? I'm assuming you went to Ohio University in some capacity, worked with the team? I did, yep. I was a manager for John Gross um, and currently work for a software company. They use us to scout um, there at Akron. So I'm in constant contact with John Gross and his staff. Um, uh, great guys. He got me into the business. Yeah, Reggie Keeley on our team was on that team. Nick Kellogg's brother. So, um, you know, those guys kind of... Uh, they opened the door for me. Uh, last year, I actually helped with the Stillwater Stars. I was a GA at Oklahoma State. Okay. Um, oh, got it. And they, so, yeah. Doug Gottlieb's coaching that team this year. Yeah, so. I saw that today. That's crazy. That's a, that's a great signing. That's a, <laughs> kudos to them, for sure, to Jeff and, and company. Um, so, yeah, with, uh, with the bubble kind of happening in Columbus, and I lived in Columbus, I live in Columbus, and um, was a GA at Oklahoma State. I kind of helped those guys, uh, you know, picked them up, took them to the airport and, you know, made sure I was uh, COVID free. And <laughs> I was kind of got the ball rolling in my head. I, I was like, I think I could do this with my experience. So exactly the Ohio University, that is us. And uh, yeah, so here we are. Yeah, no, it's obviously a great looking team. And, uh, you know, just uh, mention a little bit on the Zip Em Up. Obviously, here the representation for this matchup today, but Zip Em Up, another first year team, you know, hats off to them, uh, put together a really, really strong roster. Uh, you know, the coach, the GM, uh, great relationship with the players, guys like JP um, Makura, obviously going to be probably one of the most talked about players. So, do you have anyone that can rival JP Makura in trash talk? Trash talk wise, uh, Stevie, Stevie Taylor doesn't stop talking. Um, so hopefully the, the play is there is that he'll just keep running his mouth. So he won't hear anything that JP is saying to him. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's our best bet kind of is to, uh, just send a nonstop chatter his way. Yeah. It's a tough matchup. You guys do have though, being serious because these guys play at a lot of high level leagues. Obviously mccura has got G league experience guys, guys playing. You got two guys from Turkey, one bunch of guys from Greece, one some G League guys. Do you guys feel like you can use this to your advantage? So can you use the fact that they're a first year alumni team, even though they have to be the experience and the fact that they have a lot of high level players? Can you try to basically make them play isolation ball? Can you try to make them play for themselves? Is there a game plan to try to 
divide them basically? Yeah. So, you know, obviously there's only one ball. There's a lot of guys out there that we have to guard, but uh, only one, one ball for them to shoot at a time. So hopefully we kind of uh, keep them on one side of the floor and, and can uh, mess up what they're, what they're trying to do with that ISO ball and play good help side defense and uh, hope for the best from there. Fair enough. And with that, let's get into our picks here for the last time tonight. Got some pretty quality teams in charge. Let's talk about what we're, whoops, ah, eh, who cares? See, this is what happens when you have like uh, the text department here. Uh, so let's start with, let's start with you, Kenny. Um, so you don't like this, I assume, but I mean, this has got to help your team knowing no one's picking you. I mean, it's just, it's house money, right? No one ever picks Ohio and they didn't this year in the tournament, did they? Uh, honestly, I love it. I think that's better for us. Um, kind of gets us a, a chip on their shoulder, the old, uh, you know, something to play for another, another reason to uh, come to the game angry, really. Um, so this year, you know, in the NCAA tournament, it, it, it kind of be, started to become the, um, the hot pick in the NCAA tournament was OU over Virginia. And I was like, no, <laughs> let's keep <laughs> that under the radar. Let's try to sneak by them. So um, that, that's where I, I think we'd prefer this way. We like the queen, the clean, the clean sweep, and I don't want to see any green on your guys' pick. So fair enough. And plus our record's not that good anyway. So Charles, <laughs> why, why did you pick the nerd team? I kind of know why I did, but let's go to why did you pick the nerd team? No, uh, I mean, there's nothing not to like about the nerd team, um, you know, and, and it's not just because it's, it's gimmicky and it's fun. It, it's because this is an extremely talented team. Like I said, I think this team is, uh, you know, when I say it's going to be smart basketball, it is going to be smart basketball. I think these guys are, you know, programs that are just well disciplined, uh, you know, have played high level competition, have been underrated their, their whole careers. And I, I just think it's going to be a very disciplined team that plays and understands uh, team ball better than anybody else. And, uh, you know, Blue Collar U is going to be no uh, walk in the park, but uh, you can see the panel. We took four out of five grabbing the nerd team. I, I just think they're just going to be really disciplined, uh, really smart basketball. So the opposite thing to you, Matt, I assume you're not going to show your team this episode. No, I hate this actually. I, uh, like we, <laughs> we, I appreciate it, but you know, we were excited about being 11 C that's like the Ivy league lives in the 11, 12, 13 area. Um, everybody who gets into the NCAA tournament. So, uh, I appreciate your confidence, guys, but I do not like uh, that we we got four out of five choices here, to be honest. Yeah, no, it, it's it's going to be one of those ones. That's why we play the games. This is another one. Like I said, Columbus is going to be wild. I think this is going to be the region that has the most upsets by a landslide. I think the uh, double-digit seeds in Columbus are better than, uh, you know, some of the, the mid-level seeds in, in many of the other regions. And it's just going to be a fun region, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Haters, that's uh, X and amount. Yeah, just pretend we didn't think those. But it's going to be a fun region. So if you're coming out to watch any ball in Columbus, I mean, just the uh, the alumni teams coming in from Ohio, uh, Xavier, Dayton. Uh, uh, who Lots, I, oh, of Ohio, Lots of action. Lots of action. Lots of action. There's going to be okay. amazing, amazing basketball being played in Columbus. So, you know, uh, wins and losses aside, you know, we wish Beth, both of you guys the best of luck, but it's going to be some fun basketball and uh, can't wait to see, uh, wait to see you guys in action. So thanks for coming on Zoom to TBT tonight. For sure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you got it. Happy to come. Hope you enjoyed listening to Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hater. Subscribe to YouTube, follow on Twitter, and give us your money.